So not injured, just a little frustrated. So life the last few days looks a little like this. I'm running it down to the wire, but I completely forgot. Well, I didn't forget. I'm just leaving it very late to pack. Yeah, it's very manic. We're just trying to get the elliptical. Bear in mind, we just moved in, so don't judge our house, please. We've got a lot of work to do. Of what you've done with the place. But yeah, that's you, Erin. But yeah, no, we're packing the elliptical up now. So we're just putting some sellotape here. Gonna put some cardboard around it. Yes, you're on, you're on camera. Everybody's gonna see you, don't worry. But please don't judge the house in the garden because we have just moved in. Your backpack, okay. Right, let's get doing this because we've got about 20 minutes before we have to leave for the airport, okay? Okay? Right, get in there. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. So I don't actually use this very much, but it's actually cheaper to fly it out to South Africa, get it serviced, and fly it back than it is to get it serviced in the UK. That's how cheap it is to get it serviced over there. Um, it's like 70 pounds out, 70 pounds back, plus the service, which is like 30 quid. Whereas it costs me like over 300 pounds to get this fully serviced in the UK. So it's so much cheaper to fly it out and back. That's kind of mainly why I'm bringing it, not necessarily because I plan on using it very often, or very often, but I've got my mountain bike out there plus this, so it's more of like a precautionary thing. This is the bag we made for the elliptical. It's old curtains. And then I use an old backpack that I just sewed all together, strapped on a strap, and then Nike it out. But it doesn't actually look too bad. I mean, it works. I'll show you how it goes in. The stressful, but there we have it. All set. Anywhere. Bye bye. Say bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. casually crossing a road. We just passed a ton of sheep that were just walking by, but they were actually in the road unlike the cows. Wild. So I'm in Potch now. We did a shake out five mile run yesterday. I'm super chilled. And do you know what the hardest part is when you get on camp? It's, it's, it's not locking in. It's sort of remembering that you just need to keep taking those boxes because you got the gain from being in an environment where you just eat, sleep, train. Um, without other life woes that you have to deal with outside of it. And then also you've got the altitude doing the work as well. So it's so hard as a as an athlete, young or old. I mean, I'm, I've been in the game for a little while now. And even I still really struggle with not just trying to up it by 10%, especially in the first week. It's so easy to put yourself in a hole. I'm out here for five weeks at the moment. So my plan is just to be conscious of what I'm eating, how much I'm sleeping, how much I'm resting in the first two weeks. And then in my last three weeks, I'll probably punch it then. Um, because normally the conventional thing is you come out to ca camp, especially as a younger athlete, less experienced, older ones, or wise-headed athletes, less, probably less so. But it's so easy just to go bang. And then you just want to try and smash everything and you want it all now, now, now. But you just have to be super, super, super mindful. I can't stress this enough that we're in, we're bordering March the 22nd now, I think. Um, trials isn't for another, oh, I don't know how many weeks. I mean, I'm not racing for another seven weeks and then another six weeks after that until trials, and then another six weeks after that until after the Olympics. It's a long time, so you just need to keep bubbering, simmering the pot, just not bubbling over. Just keep raising the levels until you get to that sweet spot. That's down to your coach to make that judgment, not necessarily the athlete who gets on a camp and just thinks, right, I'm gonna smash it now. I'm gonna get it now. It's having the confidence in your training, your system, your coach's philosophy that they will tell you when to ramp it up. They will tell you when to just raise that level and then when it's time. But I mean, I'm struggling now. I just, I've got here and I just wanna smash it. I'm having a real fight myself. So it happens to everyone. Just stick to the plan. So not injured, just a little frustrated because I ran seven mile yesterday, five mile the day before the day. So I had the flight, five mile, then I ran seven mile in the morning, then I had treatment, then I went to do a three mile shake out and my Achilles was just killing me. Woke up this morning, tried to do a track session and true to form, my Achilles was just majorly fed up, but there's no pain to like touch, prod, 
play around a bit. So the Achilles itself is okay. I think it's neurally derived pain and it's likely to be either the sheath or something's, something's going on, it's bloody painful. But again, it's just another reflection of, you can, I was getting to a point where I was feeling incredible in terms of like my body was feeling super robust. And it was just, a, it was almost like a checking reminder to remind you that it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And we got into the track, every step of my two mile warm up just was agony. And I kept thinking it was gonna warm up and it, and it didn't quite warm up. And then I tried to get into spikes thinking that if I ran a bit quicker, will it ease off? Just didn't seem to ease off. And because it's so early on in the camp, if I'm honest, I've banked like 65 mile weeks for the last five weeks. And I was like, shit, this is, I was feeling like in shock that I was able to maintain it. So I think having a B week, which is what I'm gonna use this week as, is probably a good thing. A blessing in disguise potentially, because you just don't need to murder yourself all the time. So I'm gonna ease off completely. I'm meant to be doing a cross train in the gym, but I think I'm actually just gonna let my body recover because I think this is probably just my sign to say that reel it in now and then push on again for the next five weeks moving forward because it's all about long-term goal, isn't it? It's all about that long-term goal. And it's just being mindful that the work needs to be banked in the second half of this camp. So if I have to miss a day or two now, just miss it. But again, it's still pretty shit because you want camp and you wanna, like I said earlier, I was like, you just wanna push it. Exactly to what I said yesterday. So referring back to what I said, what will likely be moments ago in, in this video, prime example you just want to push and i didn't push but imagine if i did this could have been a much bigger issue so interesting one we'll see how it goes how it eases off and then take it from there i'm recording this because i don't know why i've only got my cars in and i'm genuinely questioning life i've got like a fuzzy feeling at the top of my head i don't know why but i'm really struggling with just having my cars in i don't know what it is but it's like my body's going into i've got like a real fuzzy feeling around here my body's like trying to shake but i don't know why because normally i can go sort of full body and it'd be interesting to see how my body feels doing this in a few days time because I don't know, the mental strength that I'm having to go through just to keep my calves in is, it doesn't make sense. It's not what's going on. It feels really hard. So we're heading off now to get a scan. So the Achilles pain is actually still there, um, which has got to be expected to a certain extent, I guess. Um, but yeah, long story short, it's not all sunshine and rainbows being an athlete. So I'm going to go and get an ultrasound now. Um, because it's an Achilles ultrasound, works better than an MRI. But more to the point, I, booked, I asked to get an ultrasound an hour and a half ago and I'm already in getting one. That's the difference, I guess, being in a place like Clutch where you can get things at like the click of a button. So it's one less thing to deal with. Um, so it allows you to be a professional athlete. We know what we're dealing with. I tried to give myself a full 48 hours off of running and exercise, and it hasn't made any difference. I ran this morning and it came out of a bloody vengeance. It was painful. So we're thinking it's potentially the cerebral nerve or the sheath of the Achilles because I was walking this morning completely pain free, um, but still painful. So life the last few days looks a little like this. I'm literally just icing every hour pretty much. Doing 10 minutes every hour. Garden peas are better because they wrap around the muscle a little bit more. But um, yeah, it's, it's swelling on the Achilles. So we now know what we're dealing with. Uh, it's early signs of paratendinitis. We can catch it nice and early. Um, I think we're gonna have to try and manage it. We're gonna see if we can use some anti-inflammatories to reduce it. I think what caused the issue was running on the day of the flight. Um, landing not the day of actually flying the day of landing um because normally i wouldn't do that i'd always take that day off but because we i was trying to keep the mileage in um we just yeah we did something that we wouldn't do which was a little bit silly but again that might not be the direct link to why it happened it could be a lot of factors so yeah we are now tuesday i arrived on thursday and we haven't solved it yet so bit frustrating missed two sessions now and um, plus a speed drill so we're missing quite a lot missing quite a lot if we can try and nail it and get some anti-inflammatories by today and i can get it settled by tomorrow and i can be sessioning by thursday then i'm bang on the money but we'll see so it's been a few days since i've checked in now i think we are on day six um it's been a week now so frustrating i've in summary the ultrasound showed that i've got swelling on the fat pad of the achilles and it's literally just from being on the flight i ran a seven mile run and a five mile run and so it's really dark and i can barely see where i'm going and that light i've got my face is blinding me we're just walking over to the gym now it's seven o'clock i'll be in my second spin but you know back to it um swelling in the fat pad i think that's them rubbing on the nerve and that's giving me a lot of bother it's actually really painful um to the point where it's painful to um yeah it's painful to walk and, and the pain actually comes on the longer I spend on my feet. I'm actually not in any pain whatsoever when I, I'm sort of just getting up when I've been laying down for a little while. And then when I move and I have more friction, it's this movement that's giving me the issue. I think that movement is causing like 
it's gliding and then it's then hitting the Achilles and um, nerves. But the Achilles is intact, it looks good. Everything else, Pantarix, everything looks good, appears good. All of my signs are good. I can press the Achilles, I can prod it, I can pinch it, no pain whatsoever. So it is just a case of trying to hope that this settles down as soon as possible. Um, but I can't guarantee it will. So I'm just gonna keep cross training now. It's 7 p.m. here. If I'm not gonna do it, someone else's. So I just need to remind myself that I just have to keep training hard and pushing on with it and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'll be damned if I don't try. So I'm just going to keep on it now. Earlier on, I did five sets of 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, five in each, five reps in each set. And um, that was in the pool. So I could jog this morning. I know even with the injuries, I need to keep consistent with the, the content because I think it's super important. So I'll try and get some content now while I'm on the cross trainer, but it'll be an easy one because I went on, I went quite hard earlier. So I'm starting, I'm moving up before starting at that 30 seconds. Try and keep the watts around you. 400. Speed for ease. Just gotta want it, man. Just gotta want it. I mean, nobody's watching. Me and Brian, five or six weeks at 16. Mid to high 60s. No issues. And I kept thinking, like, shit, have I got over all my issues? And then, which is a nice humble reminder that I stay locked in. Six down. When you're doing this, you'll have an internal battle. You just can't let those intrusive thoughts win. I know we got the public cool down. Anyone that made it this far, oh, I'm only going in up carbs and Achilles. It's like four or five degrees in here. There's no heroic to it. I think you just gotta get through it, man. It's easy. I'm, I saw to myself, I must have been document every little piece of this, um, the good and the bad. You'll notice the roller coaster of emotions. And when I'm on fire, I feel like I'm Superman. But of course, when you have moments like these, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes you do feel a bit vulnerable. Yeah, this is one of those times, one of those moments of vulnerability. So I think it's good to show it as well. When I say vulnerable, I mean, I'm just, there's more frustration than anything else because I kind of just want to run out, but the body just isn't allowing it. You're just gonna roll with it. You play the card, you doubt and then you just take it from there, so it is what it is. Until next time.